Okay, introduce yourself for those who might not know who you are. Hey, my name is Sound7, down with TC5. Um, been writing since 77. I'm from the Boogie Down Bronx. Okay, um, what borough are you originally from? The Bronx, Boogie Down. <laughs> when did you first um, get introduced to graffiti? I was introduced to graffiti at a young age. I mean, I remember when I was in third grade, um, looking out the classroom window and watching the train go by and seeing you know, Comet and Blade up and thinking about, wow, how, how awesome that was to see um, uh, people's name up on the subway. And then, um, so yeah, that was like the time. Okay, who were some of the artists that was up in your neighborhood at the time? At the time, grow, growing up, I mean, you know, at the time we were exposed to graffiti real early, like around 73, 74, 75. Um, we had um, Karachi 11, Crazy 5, um, Ajax was up around the neighborhood, um, uh, Blade, um, Comet. I mean, it was a bunch of different writers that were getting up, and that, those were our, the beginning of, uh, of of graffiti as far as being organic and being from um, the neighborhood. Okay, are those the writers that inspired you to become a writer? No, I mean the writers that inspired me to be the write writers were like, uh, yeah, I guess that, I mean, my the main um, uh, desire to write was always to get up, you know, to get the name up, to, to get fame. I mean, uh, it's a matter of um, just doing it it was like the the thing to do everybody's doing it it was just exciting and um uh, there was no we didn't know where it was going at the time we just wanted to get our names up okay so when did you start writing graffiti started writing around 1976 um, 70 no, i'm gonna say 77 um the end of 77 after um that wonderful summer of 77 in new york where we had the blackout and um, the son of Sam and the Bronx is burning during the Yankee game. I mean, it was a year that everything was just coming together. It was a great year. And I remember, you know, getting up like that fall, like, and that's when I was, uh, I met Scene, TZ5 around that time. Okay, um, who are some of the artists you first met when you started off? Now, my main influence of was um, influence in my life as far as graffiti was um, Scene, TC5, um, Blade also, being close and knowing that he was uh, you know somebody that lived close to me and seeing them up. Um, those were those, the main guys. Okay, how did you come up with the name Sound Seven? How I came up with that name was. Um, through, um, I, I gotta say the way it is, it, um, it was seen, um, seen TC5, it was seen. Um, I was writing Sarge at first, um, and, and um, I, it just didn't flow, like the name, I didn't, I put it up, nobody was writing it at the time, and I figured it was a great name, but and then um, I get a call from Scene one day, and he goes, y'all had this dream that I was giving you this name, Sound 7. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> and that's how it started. Never turned back, that was it. From that point on, it was Sound 7. Okay, what crew do you rep from back in the days until now? TC5, always TC5. One love for my crew. Um, we've been through a lot. We grew together, we're family. Um, I can't imagine life without my brothers. Um, TNT. My well, man Fade, um, you know HPA neighbor group crew around the way was HPA. Um, I was down, you know I was wrote a lot of guys were like you know tag this, put down this crew, but those are my main um, my main dudes. Okay, um, you mentioned TC Five. Now is that the Crazy Five or the Cool Five, and what's the difference? The Cool Five. The, the difference is the Crazy Five is the original crew. That crew has been around for way before us. And um, and then the crew was given to seeing through, uh, I believe it was Comet. Um, and that was it. I mean, it was, it was exciting. We couldn't believe it. Like, why would you give 
give us that crew. We got a crew we could start with. I mean, we had a crew already. I can't remember the original crew we had. But, um, and uh, we just started bombing it, man. We just bombed the crap out of TC5. And it just grew because it was no longer the Crazy Five, it was the Cool Five. And um, we brought flavor, we brought style to the crew. Um, you know, a lot of the guys that rep TC5, you know, all artists, um, scene, um, fade, um, those, pink. I mean, we just had such a ball, man. Growing up, it was amazing. Okay, I read in an interview that Comet gave the crew to Lil Scene, and you was one of the original members he put down. Who were the other members that Lil Scene put down, and how did y'all end up linking up with Lil Scene from TC5? My memory is very, very weak with that, but I know for sure that it was Ken, um, Fade, um, Pink, those, and then you have the other writers that, that were were close, you know, with us, like, you know, Juice, um, Spank TC5, Perks, Days from around the way. So you got different writers that were from around the way that were down with the crew. Okay, let's talk about Faye, the Shirt King. I was reading an article which said that you was actually the person that taught Faye how to airbrush. Is there any truth to that, and how did y'all two meet? Well, the truth is, um, Fade and I, we grew up together. I mean, we grew up in the neighborhood. Um, he's he just such a passionate person. Ever since, from back then till today, I don't know anybody who's as passionate as he is when it comes to graph. And um, he just, we were doing shirts, and he was like, yo, you know, how do you do those shirts and everything? I was like, dude, we, you you should be doing these shirts too. And, and um and it's crazy because we went down to um, Canal Street and they used to make compressors like in these shops. And these guys would make compressors for us with an actual reserve to grab the air. I mean, and this was the way we was airbrushing with these loud, crappy compressors. And I remember taking them down there. We got the compressor. We started doing shirts. And that was it. I mean, he took it to, he kept going, took it to a great level. That's my brother, Ed. I love Fade. He's just, that's my boy. I, the, the fact that he gives me props and talks about that, that's awesome because a lot of brothers won't even give anybody props these days, but he's the real dude, real good guy. Okay, did you ever go to the writer's bench at 149th Street and who are some of the people you would always catch at the bench? The bench. It's funny because when I go to the bench, I could think of, there's nobody I could think of more than um, then um, Des with that smile, um, and um, Trap, um, freak, you know, it was like, you didn't know who you was going to meet at the bench. It was like, okay, who's going to be there today? Um, Shy, um, BS119, which a lot of people are like, who's that? Smiley149. Um, you name it. The bench was it was uh, agent, secret agent. He would he would I would always run into secret agent there. Scheme once in a while. Um, it was it was it was fun, man. Just going there. You didn't know whether you was gonna go there and have some beef, go there and, and fight, or go there and come out having a great time out of there and, and you know getting some tags in your books. So it was a, it was a great experience growing up waiting there. You know. Okay, was there any other spots that you benched at? Oh, well, we used to bench at 125th once in a while, but uh, 149th was our spot. Fashion Motor was our spot. We used to love to hang out in Fashion Motor, which is on 149th. It used to be on 149th for 3rd Avenue up in that neighborhood. Um, that was a spot that we loved just chilling out at. And um, uh, Sahara used to run it as a curator. Uh, Stefan was running it. And, you know, we hung out there. I mean, Bronx Hip Hop came out of that area. You know, we used to throw jams there. We used to have parties there. We got, there's a few videotapes that you can see on YouTube from that area that Henry did with, with Spank hosting them, Spank TC5 hosting them. Um, that was a great spot, too. Not only the bench, but Fashion Motor. That was the spot for us. That was the Ghetto's Gallery. 
Okay, um, so what lines did you write on and did you king any? Twos and fives, I mean, you, you ask any writer if they felt they were a king. I mean, I felt I was the king in the insides at one time. You know, you bomb a few layups, you bomb a few yards a couple of times, and you'll get up pretty much. Um, but as far as king, nah, I'm not going to declare myself as a king. As far as um, um, being part of an original and being down with stuff and having style and coming out with different colors and bombing with trips, People weren't bombing with drips. They couldn't have. They didn't have the luxury to burn, to um, drop tags with mad drips. We used to make our own ink. We used to rack gallons of Flowmaster. We bombed. When we tagged, we dripped. We took panels and dripped all the way down. If you got on on, on a train after we bombed them, you was getting ink on your clothes. Everybody was get, leaving out of there with damaged clothes. Okay, what were your peak years on the subway? From 78 to 81, 82, we did a lot of bombing inside. Unfortunately, I didn't get to peace on the outsides. A few times we went peacing, and the guys could tell you, we literally got raided. And I was life was changing for me. It wasn't, um, I was already um, looking at other avenues. By that time, I was doing a lot of shirts. I was airbrushing. I was doing some canvases. I was selling artwork. I wasn't really interested. It was fading out for me. The love for the subways was fading out. I'm a late bloomer. So, you know, I'm talking about 78 to like 81, 82. By that time, the subways were becoming buffable. They had this um, this chemical on there. That it wouldn't hold. It wasn't, it was just, it wasn't that glorious anymore. For, for me, at least. Okay, um, so did you have any partners, and if so, who was it? I used to love to, I, we would always bomb it with Perks, my boy Perks, may he rest in peace. Um, Spank, CC5, Scene, Scene CC5, Fade, Chems. Um, I, I used to do motion bombing with Smiley a couple of times. We would hit the insides, you know, after meeting up in the bench and go racking or pink. We go racking together with those. I mean, we racked. We, we, we used to forget about this bombing science and all these places you guys order paint from today. We was racking. There was no ordering paint. Okay, um, did you ever have any encounters with the infamous ball busters or have you ever heard any stories that you can remember? Yeah, well, you know, being part of TC5, we were automatically um, part of Sulu Nation, so, um, and, um, we were part of the Zulu Nation along with Rocksteady crew. And um, that was putting a target on our back. So yes, we, we fought ball busters. We, um, we was always ready to get busy. Um, we did our few damages to them. Um, and um, that's it. Anything else would incriminate us. So um, yeah, we had our encounters. And we had friends that were down with ball busters too. So it was like, it was weird, but for the most part, we had to handle ours, we did. Okay, I hear crazy um, raid stories from that era. Tell us your craziest raid story. Crazy raid story. Um, two yard. Um, it was actually, it was like the coolest night because we were all together. Those was with us. Um, uh, Revon, Doc, Spank, Scene. Uh, Cess 1, 167, I mean, that's not uh, from TC5, I mean, Perks, it was the, everybody was there, it was a bunch of us, and we were up at 241st on it, and we go climbing in, and we're there, man, and all of a sudden, we're ready to get busy, we're ready to damage stuff, and we got raided, and now we're running out, and we can't go out the same way we came in. So we're trying to squeeze in under a fence. We're pulling up the fence, trying to get in. And that was like one of one of the raid. We, uh, there's a bunch of stories where we got raided, but that's always the one that sticks out the most because we were laughing most of the times as, as we were running away. And, and then from there, we, we actually, from there, we went clubbing. We went to the Roxy's after that, which was crazy. So, I mean, that was a good day. Um, did you ever battle any riders on the subway? Nah, not really. I just, we didn't battle. We were just, for, for, for me, it was all about getting up. There was no battles. 
that's it. That was a thing of, you know, oh, I burned you. The, the, you know, that was a thing of, of, you see guys talking about that. But when, the, when, as a writer, when back then, when you went to hit the trains, you didn't go to battle. You went there to get up and do your best because you know that you were representing your crew. You, were rep you wanted to do something better than last and you wanted to stand out in your style. You didn't want to be like everybody else, so you try to be unique. And um, then later on was all the bragging, you know, I burned you, your shit was whack, mine was better. You know, that's that's how that went on in our era, in our time. Now we battle, you know, we're like, ah, I'll burn you, you know, talk crap. But at the end of the day, it's always about doing better than you did the last. Okay, um, we mentioned battles earlier. I remember the TC5 and TMT battle a few years ago. Um, was you involved in that, and who do you think won that and why? I was not involved with that battle. Um, I was not, I had, I just came back, started writing just recently. I was out of the scene for a long time. Um, but, um, you know, I'm gonna say TC5 won, of course. And then you had cats on, TMT that were down with the five that switched over for that day, who I won't mention any name. So, um, but no, we won. Of course we did. TC five all the time, all the time. We will always win. Okay, we covered a lot today. Is there something you want to include that we haven't covered? Well, I mean, the fact that graffiti is. is um, it's on forever. I mean, you know, it's before us in time. I mean, the word graffiti means to scratch. Um, as far as graffiti came down to when it came to us, I mean, it was a pivotal point in history because we we brought style to graffiti. We brought shapes and forms and letters and and um, and and flavor that was missing. I'm not gonna say that we did it. Because, you know, that wouldn't be fair to older writers like Part, like Phase 2, like Re. I mean, you got other writers that were, came even before us that were already coming in with flavor. Um, but I, I, it's, it's good to say that we were part of that. What I don't like about Graph today is when I look around and all I see is throw-ups, there's no effort. You know, guys just want to put their name up. I mean, yes, that's putting your name up, but you got to try a little better, guys. Come on. You gotta bring some style, you gotta bring some flavor, you gotta bring it to the next level, not bring it back. So to all the new writers out there that you're writing and you're watching these videos, get some style. Learn. Learn from and respect. Respect those that that brought the brought graffiti to you today. Because we paved the way where we uh, we you know a lot of us got destroyed, got painted on, got our faces painted on. Got jumped, got beat up, running out of these train jobs, electrocuted, shocked, um, hit by trains. I mean, this wasn't easy. And for all you cats in Europe, you guys, you guys know your history, but uh, which I appreciate with you guys in Europe. You guys get it. And to you guys out there, I say, good work for your love, for your passion. But never forget where you guys got that style. Looking at them source magazines. And all them videos, you know where you got your style from. It's time to evolve into a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? Stop biting. A lot of you guys are still biting styles. You need to, like, evolve. That's what I got to say. Okay, you took a trip to Dallas um, a few years ago. What was it like getting out of the New York slash New Jersey area? And what was your trip like down in Texas? It was fun. I mean, you know, that one, you know, my man Dav, he took care of us. We went out there. I love that spot. We got to bait that spot, get that spot ready for me, uh, meeting of styles. Um, got great walls there, man. We need to blow up Texas, man. Blow up Texas. Texas is big, but it'll be bigger if we bomb it. So let's bomb it. Okay, any last words or shout outs to family members or friends? Um, one love to my crew, TC5, TDS, TFP. You guys know I love you, NTA, MTA. Um, BT, I love you guys. You guys are my brothers. I'm going to be moving from New, New Jersey, um, New York, metropolitan area, but my first love is always New York. I love you guys. You know, when we get together, we do nothing but have fun. 
That's what it's all about. Just enjoying it. One love, one family. God bless. All right, sound seven, TC5. Peace.